Welcome to Daily Overdose. No one said that the path is going to be easy. And it's not. We know life is rough and we know there will be pain. And whether that pain is at the hands of an enemy or at the hands of nature or time or disease, there will be pain. It's an urge. Truth be told, every champion has felt it. Every president has felt it. Every king has felt it. Every lion has felt it. Every winner has felt it. Every soldier has felt it. Every victorious person has felt it. The urge to quit. Often when people are embittered and resentful and feel like they're victims, it's because really awful things have happened to them. Now, not always, but often. And so then the question is, well, if you're in a situation and something really awful is happened to you or has happened to you, then, well, why shouldn't you feel like a victim? And is there a better alternative? Thousands have come before you and they did just fine. So quit your complaining. And it's not because you have nothing to complain about. That's not the case. It's that that's not the right approach. The fact is, and this is such an optimistic fact, as well as a judgment in some sense, the fact is that if someone else can do it, so can you. And that's something, right? If you're reading about the great heroes in history, people who are in these terrible situations, and you see someone rise to the occasion, and then you can say, well, that was a person who did that, and I'm a person, and so maybe I have that capacity too, even though I don't know how to approach it. Don't allow that inner doubt in you to tell you why you're not good enough. You ignore that inner voice and all of the external voices. Don't judge the possibilities for what you can do based upon the circumstances, because the circumstances won't determine who you are. Doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. Doesn't matter how much money you've lost. In fact, I see it only as an investment what you learn from life. You don't stop when you're tired. You stop when you're done. You stop when you complete it and you execute it. This is where you start separating the successful from the unsuccessful. Just because it says trial on the package or tribulation on the package or pain on the package, it don't mean it ain't a blessing inside and most of you turn around when you see pain. But those of us who had a right perspective, we approach it when it say pain. When we see trial, tribulation, we don't give up or give in. We know the blessing is on the inside. We don't give up. We don't surrender. We don't quit. We see differently. Our perspective is different. And because our perspective is different, our outcomes are different. Our rewards are different. If you haven't learned something from periods of suffering, if you haven't wrung the juices of your own pain and drank them, for your own nourishment, you have wasted your experience and missed the chance to expand the capacity for being stronger the next time that these seasons arrive at your door. My mental outcomes were a consequence of my habits and my habits were a consequence of my choices. It is true that character is to some extent innate. Our genetic makeup imbues in us certain proclivities. But it is as true that character is mostly a consequence of choices. We all make them, and we should make them deliberately with the knowledge that these choices are part of our responsibility toward a purpose other than our own selfish aim. That responsibility is to your family, friends, community, and country. You have purpose in this life. God has you here for a reason. You may not know it, but he does. Your job is to find it. No one else can. You need to understand that your purpose may be great in the eyes of the world, or it may be commonplace and seemingly small. Your purpose might be your family, your children. Your purpose might be tutoring a child and changing their life. Your purpose might be the business you started. Your purpose might be cleaning up your block. Your purpose might be in the help you give others. Your purpose might be in the example you set. Only you and God know. Only you and God need to know. 
Search until you find it. And until then, act as if you have it because you're wasting time otherwise. There's something in you that wouldn't allow you to stop. Dr. Howard Thurman. He said there's something in each and every one of you that waits and listens to the voice of the genuine in yourself. It will be perhaps the only guide you will ever have. And if you cannot hear it, all of your life, your days will be spent on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. And I say to you, the reason you showed up, even though you couldn't afford to be here, the reason you drove hundreds of miles, flew around the world, there's something in you, in your heart of hearts that said, I'm not going to let anybody pull my strings. It said, I'm going to control my own personal economy. It said, I've got a dream I want to achieve. I want my children to have a choice of the kind of education that they want. That said, I am the captain of my ship. That said, I'm going to control my destiny. And whatever it takes, I'm willing to do the work. 1961, 1961. President John F. Kennedy had a decision to make. The decision was whether or not to call a news conference and tell the world the United States was going to go to the moon. And I submit to you that the decision to do that was very risky. And what governed his thinking is what governed your thinking when you decided I'm going to do this. See, the technology did not exist. The answer of what will it take did not exist. No one had ever done it before. But he made a decision. He looked at Warner Van Braun, the most brilliant scientist of that day. And he said, Warner, what will it take for us to go to the moon. And he spoke five words. And those five words, I think, is what governs most entrepreneurs. Those five words, I think, is what give people like you the courage to pursue their dreams. Those five words is what I think people who are pioneers, people who are breaking new ground, make decisions on. He said, what will it take for us to go to the moon? And the response was, the will to do it. As you look at yourself, as you look at your business, what will it take for you to increase your business? The will to do it. What will it take for you to become more powerful in your presentation skills and be able to increase the number of people to quadruple your business, the will to do it. What will it take for you when others are quitting because of the rejections, when others are stopping because they just become so discouraged and they have creditors breathing down their neck and they have family members and friends telling them they're fool. What is it that will allow you to have the mental resiliency to keep on keeping on, to keep your commitment to your commitment, the will to do it every time I say it and ask you a question and I want you to say the will to do it. What will it take for you to build your business? What will it take for you to increase your recruiting? What will it take for you to bring out the greatness in you and to make your mark? What will it take for you to become a high achiever and to bring out the billionaire in you? Shake someone's hand on your right and left and say, I've got the will, I've got the will.
Thank you for watching our videos. Please like and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss another video.